Historic elections in Greece, uh, we have a winner who is probably going to be very likely, of course, to be uh, the new prime minister after they form the government and the youngest prime minister uh, that Greece has had in about 150 years. He's 40 years old. His name is Alexis Tsipras, and he's the leader of the Syriza party. Uh, Syriza, I remember, had a beef uh, with the West Coast rappers, but he settled it now. <laughs> uh, it is a party that actually did not have uh, a lot of support until very recently. Uh, just a couple of years ago, they only had about 4.5% of the vote. Uh, today, it is very, very different. After the uh, numbers were announced on Monday, Syriza had 36.3% uh, of the vote in the Greek elections. Uh, Samaras's New Democracy Party, that is the current ruling party, had only 27.8. But actually, when it comes to parliament, the numbers are even more stark. So is at 150 uh, parliament seats, which is about half the parliament, and hence they will easily be able to form a government. And New Democracy uh, had only 76, so that is very uh, big deal here. And uh, obviously, it could have much bigger ramifications because uh, this is a left-wing party that is saying that they do not believe in austerity. So th this is the most important part of this whole uh, news story, which is that this is not just about Greece. So now, in fact, the party spokesperson. Uh, explains it here as to the ramifications. They say what's clear is that we have a historic victory that sends a message that does not only concern the Greek people, but all European peoples. He goes on to say the election results heralded a return of social dignity and social justice, a return to democracy, because beyond the wild austerity, democracy has suffered. Now, I'm going to show you the numbers behind that in a second as it pertains to Greece, but so you understand the context. What had happened was that uh, it, Greece ran into some significant financial troubles. And then the Troika, which is a, a group of three governing bodies that are really not per, uh, particularly any country, like the International Monetary Fund, came in and said, we're going to impo impose austerity measures on you. So we're going to do things like increase your taxes and at the same time cut your benefits, cut your pensions, cut all these different things that you're getting. And the result has been devastating for Greece. Now, countries like Germany and, and the people behind the International Monetary Fund, etc., say that all that was necessary. Well, uh, the Greeks were told that they have no choice, that there is no alternative. Well, here was Syriza, this new party, saying, well, you know what? We think that there is an alternative. And maybe part of the answer is that we're not in the euro anymore and that we restructure this debt. Now, of course, whenever you say restructure debt, uh, all the people who gave the money to Greece in the first place, lose their minds. They go, no, you cannot restructure the debt, you have no alternatives. But the reality is, when you do an investment, it's always a risk. Everybody knows that. And you get a certain return for a certain amount of risk. That is finance 101. And very often, there will be a restructuring of debts because somebody cannot pay their full debt. In fact, the guy who revels in that most is a guy named Donald Trump. His companies have gone bankrupt over and over again. And every time Trump says, no, 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 I'm a savvy businessman. All I did was restructure my debt, right? So why can't a country do it if some of the richest capitalists in the world are doing it? And that's what the Greek people decided, that they, in fact, could do it. Now, look, there's a lot of frustration. And this is also good news because it could have gone in a different direction and largely didn't. Now, let me tell you about the different direction. The centrist Potami, which is a river party, was battling for third place with the Nazi-inspired extreme right-wing Golden Dawn, whose leadership is in prison pending trial for running a criminal organization. So now, look, Golden Dawn obviously had some support. In fact, both were, according to the reports here by Associated Press, both were projected as being between six and seven percent of the vote. But the Greek people, uh, in the end, decided not to go in Golden Dawn's direction, they decided to go left. They decided to go with Syriza and more sanity and a reasonable approach to this. So uh, we all have to celebrate that. Now, um, why did they do that? Well, since 2010, and as a result of austerity measures, the country has seen its GDP shrink by nearly a quarter. That's amazing. Its unemployment reached a third of the labor force, and nearly half of its population fall below the poverty line. Is that, I mean, look, I'll give you context. Right now, American unemployment is at 5.6%. A third is about 33%. When we were at 10%, heads were exploding in America. That was after the debacle of the 2008 crash. We were there briefly. 
And, and as President Obama was bringing those numbers down throughout his administration, when we were at 8%, people were still saying, way too high, he's screwing it all up. There are 33% unemployment, half the country is below the poverty line. You think they want change? Of course they want change. And thank God, in my opinion, they have gone in this direction rather than going to the right wing, which would have led to nothing but more disaster for Greece. Now, uh, what is Syriza going to do? Well, Syriza, in its current form, is a strategic coalition comprising a variety of political platforms that include social democrats, radical socialists, and communists, environmentalists, anti globalization campaigners, and human rights advocates. Now, the minute you mention communists anywhere in that sentence, in America, heads explode and they go, oh my God, they're communists, they're going to take over and publicize everything. No, no, they're not going to make everything public property. What, what they're saying is, and I'm going to explain their platform in a second uh, more in detail, but overall, they're saying, hey, let's take a step back here. And they, the party, back when it was getting 4.5%, was more in the line of communists. Now there's a much, much broader party that encompasses more of the middle class. Actually, when they were more left wing, it's funny because they say that the party was formed by teachers and small business owners. Isn't that interesting? Like in America, when you say small business owners, people don't think radical left, right? But in that case, they're, they're on to something because small business does not have the same priorities as big business. And the people in Greece understand that, right? Those are two totally different set of priorities. So now in this case, the coalition has become much broader and is going in a, in a more mainstream direction, just saying, hey, we don't believe that there is no alternative. We believe there is a sane alternative. So what is their platform? They have pledged to reverse many of the reforms that uh, the creditors demanded, including cuts in pensions and the minimum wage, some privatizations and public sector firings, in exchange for keeping Greece financially afloat since 2010. So now they're saying, you know what, we'll take our chances. Now, they're not saying they're immediately going to pull out of the euro. They're not saying they're going to go back to the drachma. They're saying, let's see how things unfold. If we can restructure the debt and stay in the euro, great, that's what we'll do. If it turns out we can't do that, well, then we'll have to consider other alternatives. And we believe that there is a way of paying this back to the best of our abilities without crushing the Greek people as they have been crushed all these years since 2010. We believe there is a better way. And I believe that it's past time that at least someone in Europe tried that. So I'm looking forward to the experiment. I don't know exactly the policy proposals they will implement. Of course, nobody knows that yet. I don't know that I'll agree with all the policy proposals that they'll put into place. But I'm looking forward to seeing what they have. And I'm very much a believer that there is an alternative to what the bankers tell you is your only path.